guys, it's Danielle from Wendell Woodworks here, and I have a brand new template that I just put on my Etsy page. Uh, a beautiful promise from Lamentations, and I'm going to try to make it for the first time today, and thought I would bring you along in case you would like to try it. Even though it's a simple template, there are a thousand variations and a thousand different ways you can make it, so I would love to see what you come up with, what colors you choose, what materials you use. I'm just going to show you one way today. So to start, I have just cut my backing, and I've cut it the same size as my template which today I'm doing a paper size, only an eight and a half by an 11. You can make it whatever size you want. You can make a big poster size. Uh, just for the sake of today, I'm making a small one and I have cut out a quarter inch of MDF and then an eighth inch of backer for the back. What I'm gonna do is attach my template to the quarter inch MDF and I'm gonna cut out all of these background layers, not the words. The background layers, I'm gonna shape those and paint those, and then these are going to go on my backdrop for our back layer. So let's jump in. Okay, a few things worth noting here, I realized while I was cutting. Uh, one, my template doesn't go all the way to the edge because my printer didn't print to the margin. So you can either just eye that as you cut or you can use it with a pencil. I just eyed it. And also, because this is all going back together like a puzzle, you can't self-correct. So for instance, if you start veering off the template and you're like, oh no, I gotta get back on there. Um, don't do that because all the pieces have to go back and you want it to look nice. So if you start veering off, just go with the flow. Just make it up as you go, but make sure that your line stays smooth uh, and not jerky and that you just keep on following the path you're on. All the pieces are cut. I'm gonna go ahead and take the templates off. We're going to shape it now and glue the backing back onto the eighth inch MDF. <laughs> So I just rounded over all of the pieces with the sandpaper and for this top part, this is going to be the sky and I thought it would be nice just to give it some texture before I paint it. Sometimes to do that I'll use this dry X stuff. Today I'm trying this all purpose joint compound. I'm just going to smear it on here, make it a little swirly maybe just to add some texture to the sky. Let it dry and then we will paint all of our pieces. So now I have my backing all done. All the pieces are rounded over, they're painted, they are glued to the back. I have my frame, it's not attached yet because I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna leave it plain or stain it. If you wanna know how to make the frame for the backer, I'm gonna put the card up above from another video I did, and that should give you a good head start on the frame. Okay, now it's time to do the words. And I'm gonna use this quarter inch oak plywood that I have in the scrap bin. You don't have to use this. You can use MDF, especially if you want to paint it. MDF is the best way to go. I think as far as um, being easy to cut, especially with little letters. But I'm gonna give this a go and I'm actually gonna stack cut it so I have two copies in case I wanna make an extra. Now you'll notice this font is very tiny. So if you guys aren't cursing me for this font choice yet, you might be once you start scrolling. But I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you just some little tips when you're scrolling itty bitty words. Now if you decide to blow up this template, make it a poster size, make it bigger, you're probably gonna have a much, much easier time. But because I'm just doing a paper size today and it's really small, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm actually gonna close up the E's and the R's. I'm not gonna worry about cutting those inside holes. I am, however, gonna have to draw 
or make pilot holes for my G and my Y. And the way that I'm going to do that today is using my micro drill bit. Actually, these are pretty big spaces. I don't need to, but I want to show you if you're making those itty bitty cuts, if you decide you want to cut out the O's or the R's, which you could probably do, I'm going to bypass them. <laughs> you want to use your little tiny drill bit and it will fit a 1 16th. Whoops, can you see that? Uh, drill bit size. I have 564 in my drill bit right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these pilot holes. We're gonna take it over to the saw and you always wanna do the inside cuts first to make it a lot more sturdy when you're cutting out the word later. All right, you guys, so I have my words over to the saw and I've just put in a number five blade. Now, if I was only doing one of these, I might try something smaller. It's always better to start on the smaller side um, and then you can always size up if you need to. But if you start with too big of a blade, you risk the possibility of it going wonky and just cutting through the intricate cut and ruining your letter right away. So I'm gonna start with the number five. I also want to give a couple pointers that it's okay to see the white of your template when you're cutting. You don't have very much margin here, so it's okay to kind of widen up the font a little bit as you're going. Also, when you hit the sharp corners like this, you don't just have to turn the blade or turn your piece really fast. Uh, I'm probably going to back up and move around and come at it from a different angle to make those corners. You have to be careful when you don't have very much margin. Also, the outliers, these little eyes. I'm going to attach this dot to the eight to make that an easier cut here and probably make the eyes a little bit bigger just so they're easier to cut out. If you want, you can even attach this dot to this eye. That is your call. You gotta, gotta be creative when you're dealing with itty bitties like this. All right, first word is done. I know this is a really tricky font, but if you can cut out these letters, you really can scroll everything. So it's great practice, and you know what? They don't have to be perfect the first time. Um, and I also apologize, and the lighting was bad. So I don't know how well you were able to see it with this footage. I really need to put an extra light in here. I will do that for next time. Um, once again, you can see how I left a lot of white kind of going around. Leave some margin for air and how I took those corners. I cut it from both sides just to make sure I didn't slip and slice it off. Um, if you have to do it a couple times, that's fine. Once you get this, you guys are going to be able to just do whatever. And my number five did a great job. I'll show you. These are the type of blades that came with my Pegas scroll saw. And I used the number five MGT blade. It proved perfect for this half inch of plywood that I'm doing. Okay, you guys, that was really hard. I scroll all the time, and that was a very hard font. It was so tiny. So I do also recommend maybe not using um, plywood like a crazy person like I am, because as hard as it was to scroll, it's going to be even harder to finish and to sand without breaking. So MDF is much better for that. But, you know, if you go slow, make sure you keep it on a low speed. It can be done. Letters are cut, and if you cut letters on as small of a template as me, then you probably hate me now. So now um, I very carefully took off my painter's tape because they're very fragile, but there are two things that help me finish and I don't have to do a lot of sanding. I mean, I did a pre-sanding before I put the template on. I just wanna make sure that there's no like rough edges on the side. And the two things that help me do that are this little micro zip sander and they come with these replaceable sanding heads and they're just really nice for little things and also this pack of sanding twigs which i also got on amazon it came with a pack of a hundred so i don't feel like i'm ever gonna run out um, but sometimes it's nice just to have a little bitty space for inside little holes um, so those are two things that i find helpful so i'm gonna go ahead and do a light sanding to finish them up and i think oh i don't know it's a hard choice i think i am gonna actually stain these just a little light stain color here and then we will finish this all up. It's time to put my letters on and there are two ways to make sure that it's lined up. One way is to, you know, just make, put it on and then make little marks with a X-Acto knife or a pen just so you can see where they begin. This is what's easiest for me. I think it's for more perfect. I've got this lined up so that it's in the right place. It's already centered. This is the template where I cut the words out and I am just going to put this on top so I can drop my letters in. Um, and glue them up perfectly. The only problem with this method is that sometimes it tends to want to stick to the template and it's hard to get up. So um, a little trick for that is just to lay down some washers 
or some coins. I'm gonna put some washers down here to set the template on top of, that way the template doesn't get stuck. And then, as far as super glue goes, today I'm using this Starbond Thick. I don't always use this kind, I'm actually just trying this out and it works just fine. Um, there's another one I actually like better, they raised the price, which is why I tried this one. Um, but as long as it's a good super glue, go for it. I'll go ahead and put the links of what I'm using down below. And one more tip is that after you apply the super glue to the back, dab it on a piece of paper first just to make sure it's not going to squeeze out the sides and ruin your picture. You guys, here she is. Last but not least, we need a protective finish on it. I've got a variety of these. I have spray polyurethanes. Um, some of them I've collected when I find them at my flea market that's local or just a matte finish by Krylon. I think that's what I'm going to use today because I have a little bit left. I'm going to finish off the bottle. Um, we just want to give it a nice seal. All right, normally I do a couple coats, so let one dry for a little bit, do another coat. Sometimes it says three coats. It's up to you, but the nice thing about giving it a good top coat is that even if you get a little bit of super glue smudge um, or like a shine from the super glue, it'll even that out and make everything kind of have the same shine. So it's going to have a nice finish. And we'll put a sawtooth hanger on the back and we are done. I just came up the stairs with the final project. And again, you can find this template on Etsy and hopefully more templates soon. I am new to making templates, so I would love to hear from you. What did I leave out? What else do you need to know? What are your questions? Or what else would you like to make? So thanks for watching. Enjoy your final project and thanks for scrolling along.